Okay, so as you can no doubt tell just from looking at me, things have changed since last time. I spent a few hours going through the areas that I had already explored, just fighting the enemies, grinding a little bit of tech scrap, leveling up, getting some new gear. I got the uh, the full scarf set, I'm wearing the leg pieces at the moment, they look pretty cool. The uh, entire armor set covers the body, which I like. But uh, well the set bonus for that is pretty okay. It, boost the effect of vital injection, not vital injection, what is it called? Uh, vital boost implants, which increase your health, so it makes them more effective. And while that's nice, I honestly like the uh, specific stats that the pieces of the Gorgon set give instead, such as increased impact for the hand pieces. Uh, what is this? Oh yeah, reduced energy consumption of the drone for the headpiece. And what did the body give again? Yeah, reduced stamina consumption. Whereas the scarab set being medium armor increases your stamina consumption by a little bit. As for where I acquired this armor, you know those uh, tough enemies that murdered me near the start? Yeah. Turns out they're security guards. And if you actually approach them, they'll talk to you. There's four early on in the level, maybe there's more later on. But in the parts I've already explored or around there, there's four of them. So you basically have a chance to get their full set. I missed getting a piece. And uh, that's basically what I did, and then I recorded another episode, which is kind of lost because I forgot to record my audio. As a result, I ended up doing a few things off camera unintentionally in addition to all the stuff that I just told you about. Fortunately, the only thing that really mattered was completing Arena's questline at this point. I uh, managed to steal a staff from the security guardsman and I gave that to her and she was quite taken with it. And now she's gone, I'm assuming she'll show up later. Otherwise I just explored paths that I elected not to go down in my initial exploration but there was nothing really major there. Just some uh, early appearances of scab enemies. Oh yeah, backstabbing? It actually shows you when you're close enough to do it with that orange coloration. Another nice thing is if you actually one-shot an enemy with the resulting backstab, you'll acquire automatically, as far as I can tell, the armor piece on that body part. Although since I struck the torso, I got no armor pieces. But you can do that without energy, which is quite useful. Oh yeah, another combat mechanic I learned from a very nice mechanic guide on the uh, Steam discussion page. You see that little lightning bolt symbol on my drone? Oh yeah, I found a drone module as well. I got the concussive module, which basically makes the drone ram an enemy. It um, The damage is quite good. It's very rangy as well. Very rangy? What? <laughs> it, it has uh, about as long range as the firing. And it's pretty much guaranteed to stun the enemy, so it's really nice to use in melee. But yeah, you see that lightning bolt symbol? Basically, if you have enough energy to use a drone module, and you're not locked onto an enemy and you hold triangle, you'll store up to one charge per module. So you can then unleash it later at will, even if you don't have the energy. And that's a mechanic that they probably could have told me about when I got the drone, but they decided not to for some reason. I don't know, because Dark Souls doesn't tell you things. Not the best idea here, but it is what it is. There's actually a lot of uh, details to the combat like that that they just kind of never tell you about. And it honestly negatively impacts the game because it means there's a lot of stuff that you can play around with to um, do better in the combat and unless you just happen across it you're never going to know it's there. For example, you know why I was confused about what I could and could not block? It's because whether or not you can block an attack depends not on the weapon but the type of attack it is. If an attack is coming straight at you at torso level, you can block it. If it's coming a little bit above or below, you can't block it at all. You will take 100% damage if you attempt to block it. And instead, you have to use those leaps and ducks in order to avoid it. Also, also, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. If you uh, attack immediately after jumping or ducking, you get a special counter attack that does a good bit of damage as well as high impact. I might be able to show it off here. Um, let's see, wasn't there another worker around here? Yeah, he's off there. He shouldn't notice me. I can uh, try it out against this dude. 
assuming I can bait out the melee attacks. Yep, boom, duck, and follow up, and now it's stunned for a fair bit, allowing me to strike the real leg. Jump, and oh, I mistimed it. Yeah, that's the uh, risk you take. If you mistime it, you're still gonna get hit. Oh, back off, because it's doing the fire AoE. Thankfully, that is a long enough windup that it's super easy to avoid. And then back around, and I can get one or two hits, depending on how quickly I attack. Ah, I'm so bad at timing that low attack for some reason. Let's heal up to be safe. The ducking one, though, is easy. Oh yeah, another cool thing. You notice how with my initial lock-on, the cursor is white? That means I'm targeting it generally and I do neutral damage. If I- Whoa! Okay, I had not seen that before. I had never actually gotten hit by that. Um, if I then choose to move my uh, right analog stick, I then target a specific part. Why this is significant is that against enemies who have no unarmored bits, it can actually be worth it to keep that initial lock on because you actually end up doing more damage than if you specifically target those armored bits. Those uh, annoying ass tripod enemies I encountered once or twice are a good example of that. Okay, this is taking a while. The ducking and jumping doesn't seem too useful against this enemy because strafing is honestly pretty powerful. And it takes less time to do, but yeah. Just figured I'd show it off against that enemy since that's a pretty good example. I'm pretty sure this was the direction I was heading in. At least I hope it is. Okay, yeah, I vaguely remember this. Actually, I think I unlocked a closer shortcut, but whatever. I'm already most of the way here. Now, you love doing your charge, so I can just sit here blocking, and I'm fine. Now, let's try and, uh, oop, actually do an execution here. What are you gonna do? So I wanna- oh, I wanna duck that one, but I failed the timing. My bad. As did- as I did there. God damn it, wow. There we go. That time I got it. No execution though. Killed him a little bit too quickly. And you're not worth executing. I'm just gonna use you to build up energy, I think. I wonder why this dude is unarmored. That's like the only enemy I've come across that's completely unarmored. I suppose it doesn't need be significant, it could just be a random choice on the dev's part. I love opening with this uh, sprinting vertical attack, it does a lot of damage and it looks so cool. Maybe it wasn't the best to use it there, but hey. Okay, I might not be doing so good. Uh, it's been a few days since I played the game, so I'm honestly a bit rusty. Can I just like, ignore them? Are they just gonna leave me alone? I know there's like one dude over here, yep. Can I, uh, do a backstab on you? Hey, what do you know? Okay, good, yeah. They're ignoring me. I'll just continue to ignore them then. Alright, we get another one of these tripod-like enemies. Can I drag that dude over? Might as well use my drone. Yeah, the damage of that doesn't seem too hot from what I've seen so far. Ooh, okay, that's not blockable. I thought it would be. I suppose that's one issue with the block, dodge, uh, do block, duck, or jump system is... It's not always entirely clear which one you want to use, you know? Like, generally from the attack's height you can tell, but it's not 100% guaranteed. You do have to do a little bit of developer mind reading. Okay, this could turn out poorly depending on what that decides to do. Let me unlock. I'm trying to unlock, thank you game. Um, hmm. Can't op- oh, okay. Can't operate that door there, but no one else seems to be around. Can I just... Take you out? It doesn't help that there's damaging acid everywhere as well. But this should murder you. Okay, good. <laughs> oh yeah, you see how that tech scrap meter down there is filling up? I learned what that did too. The amount you need to fill it up is how much you need to get your next level up. And if you fill it up, then it ends up giving you a refill on any injectables you have. One per implant. So since I have two health injectables equipped, I'd get two uses back if I filled that up. And that's why I was getting those free refills. 
it'd be nice if they had explained that as well. And that's actually kind of like a, an anti-grinding feature. Because if you grind up, it's going to take longer to fill that meter, meaning you're going to get less refills when you explore a level. So that's an interesting way of balancing that. Can I, I want to pick up that item. It's probably important. Nothing's going to murder me if I get close. Can we just, uh, be buds? Oh. Ooh, rare material scrap. I want that. I think that just means it has a lot of uh, tech scrap in it. Okay. We're cool. We're cool. <laughs> oh. Not that I have much of a chance of continuing on much further, given my absolute lack of health or health restoratives. I'd really like to come across a med station, but I've only seen one thus far, and I imagine there's not going to be one more in the near future. A shortcut I would also take. Is it just me, or... Does that dude up there look very large? Larger than the normal dudes? It might just- oh no, okay, nope, can't ignore him. Okay, yeah, he's normal sized. Uh, let's go for the left leg since it's unarmored and I just want to kill him as quickly as possible. Get out the attack and... Nope! Okay. I did stun him, but I thought he was going for an attack, so I backed off. I don't want to do anything fancy and get myself killed, especially since I might be close to a shortcut. Okay, there were more enemies up ahead there. Maybe I should be- okay, so I'm pretty sure ops is my goal. It also tells me that there's an elevator that way, so that might be a shortcut, but it's hard to say. Oh! Something just broke through the boxes, didn't it? Uh... Okay. What? Broke the boxes. Oh. Well, that's looking away from me, so I'm just gonna sneak past. Hopefully not rouse its ire. Although I might have to take it out. Oh boy. I think I passed out from the pain. Don't know how long I've been lying there. Cold on the concrete floor. Half dead. Awakening to a nightmare. I couldn't remember where I was. Who I was. When I saw those people, what happened to them? Somehow I made it to Ops, and the memories are blurry and hazy. I remember the pain. I've never been so afraid in my whole life. Didn't even realize I was totally blind in my left eye until Nithing patched me up. Guess I'm better now. Even my sight is coming back slowly. Okay, well, I might be able to survive here if I can take out this dude. I haven't had much trouble with them in the past. I'm going to avoid the whole jumping, ducking thing. It's better to just circle strafe around the right with them, I found. Actually, ooh, that attack is dangerous. That's a reason to stay close to them. Given how quickly that melee strike is. I think it might be blockable, but it's quick enough that I probably wouldn't react in time. And back off. Ooh, I was close. Keep strafing to the right, it's left. Yeah, that seems to be consistently good. And this should kill it. Okay, I'm good for now. Uh, so is there actually anything in here that was worth coming for? How would he... Oh, I guess that is a new implant. I could have sworn I had one of those. Maybe it's the uh, V2 version that I had. Yeah, I picked up the V2 from elsewhere. This is the V1, and then the V.9 is the pre-order bonus one. It's an injectable that gives you a buff to all your damage, but I already have one of those equipped. This one is an elemental buff, although it requires energy to use. I think the other one does as well. I mainly equip that because apparently elemental damage is really good against robot enemies, so I seem to have the most trouble with. So I figured that might come in handy in a pinch. Okay, I saw at least one worker wandering around here, so I'm just going to approach carefully. I don't want to get surprised out of no... And look what almost just happened. Alright, make sure I'm targeting the head. So I kill her as quickly as possible. Yep, made out the attack, come on. Probably should have used the vertical strike, but it worked out. I'm mainly worried about that rivet gun station. It's a just actually I did kill a hammer enemy. I guess that's why it's there. If you try and rush forward, he'll run towards here to hit you with ranged attacks. 
like the jerk that he is. I really wish you could use these if you use the hammer. That would be a cool little bit of environmental interaction. But it seems they didn't bother to implement that. Alright, that was worthless because that is for creating Mark 1 weapons, and I want to make an upgrade to Mark 2 weapons. Oh yeah, it's another cool little feature, is um, you don't need to use all types of materials. If uh, you have enough materials to craft a Mark 2 version of a thing, or say, if you have a Mark 1 thing and you want to upgrade it to Mark 3 and you have the materials, you can just skip the Mark 2 step entirely. And that's nice, that, me that reduces the amount of grinding, since you don't, you don't have to go back to old areas for lesser upgrade materials. D, will you check in? I waited 30 minutes for you yesterday. That's far too long for me to be out and about. I need those items. But if you can't procure them, I have other sources, so don't worry. Just let me know you're okay. Access denied. Oh, of course it is. I might be finding that ahead. I'm guessing that's going to be a shortcut back to the start. I doubt I'm going to survive long enough to actually acquire the necessary access. Can I, like, do a plunging attack? I'm worried, though, that I might fail it and then get killed by the enemy. Hmm. Yeah, I know that they're there. What if I, uh, aggro them from a distance with the drone? That's probably safer. Yep, you come up here to me. Oh, he's standing in acid, so yeah, dropping down would not have been a good idea. I wonder why some of these are like super aggressive and some of them are zombie-like. Really, I don't know what's making them crazy in the first place, so maybe I should be asking that first. Alright, well, might as well overcharge this. I'm not sure what that unlocks. I guess I can follow the power line. Oh, it's this thing right over here. Ooh, maybe this is a shortcut, please? I would really enjoy that. Come on, game. Throw me a bone. A metallic robo bone. Oh. Is this where I think it is? Material Depot. Aha! This is right at the start. That's the first enemy in the area over there. Perfect, okay. Now I can die and be perfectly fine. I'll still try to avoid that though. Okay, and I acquired a decent amount of tech scrap on the way as well. I might as well bank that since I want to heal up anyway. Hello. I still haven't found this dude's meds. I've thoroughly explored previous areas I've been to, so I have no idea where they could be unless they're just later on in the factory or if they're like super well hidden. Yeah, I'm only gonna level up when I specifically need more core power for something, that way I can look continue to make anything I'd want to use. They look out for you. Let's see, is there anything I want to test out against this dude? Hmm. Not really, I'm just going to go for the kill. I like using enemies that aren't too dangerous as testing dummies for learning or getting more used to uh, new mechanics. That's probably why they're there, even in the later parts of the level. Along with the actually newer dangerous enemies. Okay! Because I went through slow and steadily, I actually managed to survive long enough to unlock a shortcut. Maybe I should continue to play like that. Saves more time overall. I'm not skilled enough to just rush into things with abandon. For example, I am going to do a sneak attack on you. On the off chance I can acquire a piece, uh... Yeah, let's go for the right leg to increase my chances of one-shotting. Because I already have their entire set. Why can't I... Hello? There we go. They're also going to be somewhat at the middle of their back. The aiming is a little bit fiddly. Maybe I should... Ooh! Don't want to stand in the acid. Maybe I should try, like, blocking. Okay, that worked. 
Oh, but he got knocked far enough away that I couldn't uh, actually hit him with the counterattack. That's annoying. Didn't happen this time though, but oh. I find myself just using horizontal strikes even though I ooh dear, should probably be using vertical s I might be dead here. Yep. I couldn't actually get out of the acid because I was locked into it thanks to that canned animation. I tried a healing but it didn't proc quickly enough. Okay, well, that's not too far away. It's not that big of a deal. I'm just gonna ignore you. The elevator should already be here, right? Right. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about damaging floor. I really don't think that's a good feature in this kind of game. That's like basically a worse version of poison. Because at least poison theoretically, especially the Dark, Soul, Dark Souls variety that builds up, can be avoided, potentially. This is just flat damage if you stand in a certain spot. Although, given the whole blocking, ducking, jumping mechanic, I suppose it might be there for a reason. Basically, if you do the proper dodge maneuver, you can avoid taking damage from anything if you do the right action. I did not do the right action there, which is a bit odd. I would have thought that attack, since it's coming straight up my torso, would be avoided by blocking, but I guess not. Maybe I needed to duck that. I'll try that out in the future if uh, the same thing occurs again. Have a nice day, Warren. But yeah, it allows you to avoid damage entirely while standing your ground. And that means you can avoid falling into pits or stepping on damage tiles and whatnot, and that's probably why they put them there, to encourage you to do that. Especially since the whole jumping and ducking thing is a mechanic that they actually explicitly explain to you, in this level even. why I'm trying to get better at that, but it's like, you, you, you either have to know what the move looks like in advance, or have really good reaction times, or both in some instances. Oh, I just realized, does this game have a mechanic where sometimes the tech scrap is in an enemy? Because I didn't pick my stuff up, it was just, I got it after killing that dude. I never noticed that before. Alright, let's get in a less acidy area. Yeah, see that one, that charge is blockable, but the other one, nope. What else are you gonna do, buddy? Okay, that should be blockable as well, yep. Let's, uh, save up a drone charge. There we go. Now I can do the impact immediately in the next encounter, or just, you know, whenever I actually feel like doing it. Ah, that attack is not worth blocking. They recoil far enough away that I can't really respond. Oh yeah, backstabs, you don't need to actually sneak up on the enemy, you can do them on command as well. Much like, uh, Dark Souls. Comes in handy like it does right there. Alright, lots of stuff not currently active. Presumably I have to restore the power. Or oh, come from the opposite side, one of the two. Okay. I'm sorry, but I just can't wait any longer. I hope you're okay, that you're still out there. That you found a safe place. I'm going to take the maglev to the old bio labs now. Try to get there if you can. I'll be waiting. Okay. That's a good surprise. Uh I keep I always do the wrong thing. I actually did try ducking there, but my timing was off so it didn't work. Uh, 
Yeah, I have no idea who this Benjamin Burke fellow is. He's been talking to me a few times throughout the level. I guess he's talking over some sort of intercom system. So he's speaking to someone, not necessarily me. And he hasn't had them respond to him yet. No idea what that's about. Okay, so this is another shortcut leading back to another shortcut. I question the use of this since there's only a few enemies between this and the previous shortcut I just opened up, so honestly I think that would be better. But hey, it's nice having multiple options. So, hazardous waste storage. I feel like that, if anything, would be progress. So, let's see what's over here in recycling. Hopefully good stuff. Oh, going deeper down. I was about to ask if I've been here before, but since there's an item here, probably not. Another vital boost. The game really wants me to stack health between having a bunch of those and the scab set with its health boosting set bonus. Is that all that's over here? I guess so. Yeah, nothing else looks like it's breakable. Okay, I was... I mean, I guess it's good I came here first, but I didn't exactly get much from it. Alright, onward into hazardous waste storage. Now that looks like a boss arena if I've ever seen one. They've even got an appropriately large door for the place. Endurance Enhancer. It doesn't say new implant acquired even though I don't recognize that. What does that do? That's the vital boost, yes. Oh, okay, that's the uh, stamina boosting one. Yeah, I have one of those equipped already. Hmm, I can't hot swap the vital boosts, can I? I'm pretty sure I can't. Yeah, it's hardwired. I guess that's why they have that system in place to prevent you from, say, stacking health right before a boss fight. I'm assuming this is a boss. Let's see. Yeah, what do you know? Of course it fucking is. Okay, you've got a bunch of legs. I can target those, it looks like. Oh, no, no. Hmm. How am I supposed to avoid that? Maybe better timing. I'm trying to switch my target to another one of the legs. Okay. It's just a bit fiddly as to whether or not it will let you do that. I wonder if I should be using lock-on on this fight or not. Since it's a large enemy, my instinct is no, but you never know. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Like... I guess maybe doing one hit to the legs and then backing off? I mean, I guess that'll prevent me from taking damage, but it's gonna make this fight take a while. Am I even doing... I don't think I'm doing damage to its HP bar by striking its legs. I guess maybe I'll be able to bust them down and then actually strike its main body? Hmm... Gotta say... I'm not sure if I like this boss right from the get-go. Seems like it might be a little bit bullshit, but we'll see. I'll have time to learn it. Contamination detected. That was not a smart move on my part. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be using lock-on. Better to manually control the camera in this kind of fight, so can I bait out one of his attacks and then go in for damage? Maybe. Maybe do the uh, spreading attack? Ah, uh, I wasn't able to get away quick enough. Should probably try and focus on one leg specifically. Okay, good. I did damage it. Presumably I can go for others. If I don't miss, maybe I should be using the lock-on to prevent me from missing then. Did it repair its leg or what? Do I need to like bust them all at once maybe? It's really hard to tell what the game actually wants me to do here is the thing. At least it's not doing its leap attack, which is the one I had the most trouble avoiding. That attack is also pretty nasty though. That spin. Spin to win, baby. Spin to win. 
The main issue is that no matter what attack I do, I can't get away quickly enough. So are they just punishing builds that use slow weapons? Because that's kind of horseshit. I guess I just need really good timing or something. But yeah, look at how long it takes me to start that attack up. Oh, this is not a good place to be. Ooh, that actually seemed pretty effective though. I ran out of stamina, but I got away just in time. Nice. That looked pretty badass. Probably ruined by my commentary revealing that I'm just a hapless idiot, but hey. I do love how cool my character looks while doing this. I'm not sure if I'm making any progress though. I don't seem to be damaging its parts at all. And nor am I reducing its HP meter. Okay, so it's repairing its legs. Am I actually making permanent progress? Do I need to keep hitting the injured leg? I'm going for the uninjured ones with the idea of breaking them all before it can repair them, but maybe that's not what I need to do. I need to focus on one and then maybe bust it off by continuing to focus on damage. Oh, here we go. Okay, I actually did a decent amount of damage there. Nice. So this boss fight actually shouldn't be bad now that I have a rough understanding of what I want to do. Actually hitting it though when it's down, not exactly the easiest thing in the world. Maybe uh, this would be a better weapon, I don't know. Ooh, that does a lot of damage and impact. Okay, that actually does guaranteed impact, that's fantastic. Why is it so difficult to actually hit the pot that damages its main HP though? Like, that's kind of an issue. You saw that towards the end I was attempting to do so, but I just wasn't hitting it. I feel this is a case where the enemy's hitbox should probably extend beyond its model just a little bit to ensure that the player can actually hit it. Okay, let's get my elemental buff out since I want to use that. I like that the sprinting attack of this weapon seems to do a guaranteed impact. Okay, it's not guaranteed at all, but it does do very high impact, so shouldn't require too many more hits. Either that or it requires less to stagger it as the fight goes on. So my earlier attacks contributed to its easiest stagger later on. Okay. It's two healing bits I've used so far, it's less than ideal. There we go. And what? Why am I not hurting it? I hit it- I hurt it with the second attack, but... Oh wait, did I just... I just knocked off one of its limbs, so that is something you can do. It's just that the uh, hitboxes for them are incredibly fiddly. Like, way more so than they should be. I mean, not that they should be fiddly at all, but more so than I'd be willing to forgive. Alright, let's go for the next leg. Use the, uh... Oh, I didn't... I didn't store up the impact charge. My bad. I gotta get used to doing that in the middle of a fight. Yeah, okay, I want to target the bit near its, uh, torso. That's what becomes the hitbox, and that does make sense. Rather than the, uh, the outer leg. Alright, so let's store up that, and since I have the energy, let's store up this as well. Uh, right, I can't be targeting it at the time. Wait, it's not doing it at all. Oh, because I'm still targeted. God damn it. Why do I have trouble with uh, getting rid of lock on? Maybe I shouldn't bother with the drones at all during this fight. Alright, and then hit this thing. Boom. Alright, there goes another leg. I'm not sure why it went all slow like that, but that's fine. Oh, presumably I could have uh, done some damage to it. Oh, and it might actually be more dangerous now. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten rid of its legs. Well, I'll still be going for them because why not? Wow, that attack goes on for a while. Oh, hey, it, it uh, repositioned itself, so now its two remaining legs are arms. That's actually pretty cool. Alright, I'm trying to figure out where it's vulnerable now, now that it's in this form. That's actually a pretty novel way of handling phase changes. Make it dependent on player actions by breaking bits of the enemy's body. 
rather than just the thing that occurs when the enemy gets to a low enough level of HP and I might- hmm. Uh, how do I escape from this? If I had gotten stuck in that earlier, would I have just died there? With no way to avoid it? Okay, so I need to strike that most vulnerable bit, but I'm assuming it's gonna be less dangerous once it has no limbs? I'm hoping that's the case. I mean, it got more dangerous when it lost two. Well, you know what they say, those paraplegics are the most dangerous individuals alive. They know wheelchair foo. Warren knows this quite well himself. Oh god damn it. <laughs> I'm not sure what Joko is trying to make there, but uh Okay, I gotta get out, come on. Gonna heal up. Oh, I might not have it on this attempt, simply because I failed that one charge. Or failed to dodge it. My commentary is so scattered today, isn't it? Okay, I voted that time. Come on, go in for the damage. Did I knock it off? I did, perfect. Okay. And I- Ooh, nope. Of course it has more stuff going on. I really like this boss. Yeah, never mind my uh, earlier sourness. It actually has a lot going on. Uh, it still has one limb. I gotta take that out. Definitely want to stay locked on if I'm doing the sprinting attacks. It's very difficult to manually aim them. It's gonna do another one. Yep. I'm glad that it telegraphs that one highly. Okay, does it still have that limb? Ooh, I think I knocked it off. Perfect, okay. Now I just gotta go for one more hit as it, at its weak, exposed, not quite fleshy bits. Should I just go in for the attack? Let's do it. Yeah, nice. Firebug Throttle V2. It's kind of weird that you only learn the name of the boss after you kill them. Okay, Firebug. So... Something I want to know immediately. The weapon that I acquired, it's a, uh, a fast weapon so I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but it's V2. Now, as I went over before, uh, as I learned after I killed the first boss, you automatically get their boss weapon if you kill them, period. But if you kill them while meeting a special condition of some sort, then you acquire a more powerful version of the weapon. In this case, if I had done so with the Imperador, the Pax rather, I'd have a Pax Imperador V2. And I have a V2 Firebug throttle. So I guess I must have met the condition during the fight. I'm guessing, since it's probably optional, it must be breaking off all of its limbs. That seems a reasonable guess. If so, I can't believe I actually... Well, I did definitely seem to get the better weapon. But uh, I can't believe I managed to happen across that. That is lucky. Not so much in my case, though, given that it's a fast weapon, but... Since I was lucky enough to actually get the better boss weapon, maybe I should switch to using some quicker weapons. I was hoping to save those for a second playthrough so things would be completely fresh, but maybe that's a bad idea. If nothing else, uh, let me favorite that and that one. If nothing else, let me check out its moveset. Okay. That's a good moveset. That was the horizontal combo. This is the vertical combo. That's also quite good. I've also been told that uh, there are special combos you can do if you do certain inputs. I believe it's horizontal, horizontal, vertical, and then horizontal, vertical, vertical, I think. So horizontal, horizontal, vertical. Yeah, it's a special move. And the other one I thought was, what was it? Was it vertical, horizontal, horizontal? No, that's the same one. It should be a, a different looking move, I'm pretty sure. Vertical- oh, yep. That was vertical, vertical, horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm gonna be using this weapon.